Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Lemon Shortbread Workshop with me, Michelle Wilding from Boozy Bakers. Uh, I hope you're all ready to do some baking or maybe you're watching and you fancy making them another time. Either way, it's absolutely fine. Uh, feel free to comment, ask questions, um, anything uh, that you want to know, um, it's no problem. I will answer as I go. Um, so I'll just give you a couple of minutes. I will not you know, make sure you're all with me. Um, I've got everything kind of pre-weighed, but you know, I'll give you a chance to catch up. Hi, Irene, nice to have you with us. I do love lemon shortbread. It's, uh, I don't know, it just it makes me feel a little bit like springs on the way. So um, yeah, I've got everything here ready to go. Whoops. Um, and then what I will do is I will make the shortbread um, and then there's a time to chill the shortbread um, but whilst it's chilling and yours is chilling um, I have some pre-prepared ones that I'm going to show you how to ice um, and then you can do that in a little bit later if you just want them to chill before you bake. Uh, so don't worry about uh, oven settings at the moment because you can have a cup of tea before you get to that point. Right then. Okay, shortbread. Um, there's not a lot of ingredients to this. Um, traditionally, um, shortbread is one part sugar to two parts butter to three parts flour. So you've got the three ingredients. Hi, Bridget. Um, and then we're going to add some lemon to ours today. But you, if you don't have lemon, you can make plain shortbread, or if you want, you can add your own uh, flavors. It will work well with chocolate chips, cherries, spices, um, some nuts. Um, so you, this is quite a versatile recipe. So anything that you want to have a go with, you can have, even if it's another time that you make it, jazz it up try some different ingredients. So I have 200 and butter. Um, now, um, I have said butter. Hi, Rona. I have said butter because um, you want this to harden. So you don't really want to drink. Um, I'm hoping, I look like I'm coming on and off my screen, so I'm hoping everyone can see me. Um, so, softened butter, you just did it soft enough that you can mix it. You can see me all right. Fingers crossed you can. I keep getting a blank screen, but maybe that's just my machine. Um, so I've got 250 grams of softened butter. Um, I'm going to stand up for this, uh, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mix. As I said, you can use a machine if you so wish. But it's a bit cold today, so this is kind of hardened a bit more, but a bit of elbow grease. And all I'm doing is just making that a bit softer. And I'm using the back of a wooden spoon just to mix it around. Hi, Isabel. Right. So to the 250 grams of uh, butter, I'm going to put 110 grams of caster sugar into it. There we go. And then you just want to mix that together um, so that you can no longer see the sugar. It wasn't great. You kept stopping this distorted sound, but it seems to be okay now. Phew. Um, it's all right, something's just popped up on my computer. We don't want that. There we go. Right. Excellent. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It's gone again. There. Back. Hopefully, my glitches are at the same time as yours. So I'll make sure I don't say anything important if I lose my screen. Um, right. So all I'm doing is mixing 110 grams of caster sugar in with 250 of butter. I managed to slightly damage my elbow yesterday doing some uh, gardening. Um, so I'm, 
I'm holding the spoon a bit further down today uh, just because I'm finding that's helping me. So if I look a bit Neanderthal-like, that is why. It will be stiff. As I said, you can use a mixer if you'll find that easier. There's no problem at all. I don't tend to on these uh, because of the noise and I want to be able to talk to you uh, and not you having to listen to my machine going. Um, but it will be a stiff mix because we're making a nice um, dough. Right. That is all mixed together. I will show you that. There we go. Right. To that, I'm going to add um, some lemon um, zest. Now, if you're going to add icing, one lemon zest will suffice. If you're um, averse to adding the extra sugar on top, I would actually go for a bit more lemon. Um, so I'm just going to zest uh, the lemon into the whole lemon I'm using. Now you can get wax lemons and unwaxed lemons and um, some of them don't actually say what they are. Um, it might say on the barcode. If it's a wax lemon, just give it a bit of a, a scrub uh, with some warm water um, and get the wax off it. Um, otherwise, go ahead and use it. But you don't want to use the white, that's quite bitter. You want to use the yellow. So I'm just going to work my way around this lemon. And uh, that's it. Make sure we get all the nice yellow zest off of it. Smells amazing already. So I've got some facts for you today about shortbread because I do like I do like a fact or two. So um, apparently, shortbread has been made since the 12th century, um, but it was um, probably more accredited to um, the Mary Queen of Scots. But at this point, it was probably refined, and the big houses had French uh, chefs. Um, so they may have refined it a bit, but it used to be made um, in circles and then cut into triangles, and they would be made with, um, flavoured with caraway seeds. Um, and they used to be called French petticoats, or petticoat tails, sorry, petticoat tails, because, you know, when you see um, a triangle of um, shortbread, you've got the kind of fork imprint of the pattern on the edge, which if you hold it the other way up, the point look more like the waist and the fork print would look more like the frill of a petticoat. So there you go. Lots of uh, nice little facts there for you about shortbread. Right, I'm about there. So, so far, just to recap, I've got 250 grams. It's gone again. There we go. To recap, I've got 250 grams of butter um, with 110 grams of caster sugar and then the zest of one lemon. There we go. And I'm just going to give it a mix up. Like so. There. It's always easier to do this when standing. My arm being up at an angle isn't great, but I'll, I'll be decapitated through this whole thing if I'm not careful. Right, so there we go. That's just given a mix in. Um, and then our last uh, ingredient at this point is the flour. So I've got here 335 grams of plain flour. Um, so I'm going to add that. In there. Um, now, this this uh, takes a while. Uh, again, if you have a mixer, it won't take so long. Um, but you really have to mix this, and it will start to go a little bit like you're making um, the topping for an apple crumble. Um, it will look like there's far too much flour in there. Don't give up on it. Um, just kind of try to mix it in, um, and it may get to the point that you get your hands in. Can I use limes? I love the taste. Yes, Alison, you can use limes. You can use orange zest, lime zest. Um, you can mix it up and do a bit of each if you've got like uh, one of each. Um, you can use cherries. 
You can do all sorts. Um, do post your pictures um, when you've made them uh, underneath uh, the workshop. It's great to see what everyone's been doing. Um, my son, I'm going to stand up for a minute just so I'll, I'll twist a little bit. There we go. My son absolutely loves uh, the taste of lemon. Uh, so lemon drizzle cake and lemon shortbread are his absolute favourites. So I'm just going to, I'll try and show you how it's going bit by bit. So you can see that I'm working with it, but it's still very floury at the moment. So keep going. Um, and just keep trying to mix it. If you have an electric mixer, you'll probably find that you are sitting with a ball of dough. Uh, you can go put the kettle on if you like. <laughs> I'll try and hurry up though. Now, um, this is going to make about 15 to 20 um, smaller cookies, not huge. Um, of course, if you want to use a bigger cookie cutter, it's not a problem. Um, if you want to press it into a tin and make um, a big round or square of a tray of shortbread, you can do that. All we need to think about is how long you um, cook it for, but we can do that. So if, if you're using something bigger, um, just write it in the messages or I'll, I'll come to the times and give you some ideas in a bit. Equally, although shortbread will last a good month if you keep it in an airtight container, and in fact, some people say it improves um, as the time goes on. Um, but if you don't want to cook it all up at once, um, another way that my nan used to do is um, she would make, this goes with my sugar cookies that I make as well. You can make the dough up, roll it into a log and cling film it. And then whenever you want fresh baked cookies, or maybe you're selling a house and you think fresh baked biscuits is the way to kind of get people to buy it. Um, people say that you know, fresh baked stuff helps. You can cut like segments off, think like a Yule log. So you cut your slices um, and, and just bake a few at a time. But um, yeah, I don't know if it helps. I do like the, the smell of fresh baked things and coffee. I've just realized that my little dog has been sunbathing outside and she's the wrong side of the door. Normally they are nice within the uh, playroom but um, she's managed to find herself on the wrong side of the door today. So she, she squinnies a bit. I might have to just um, let her in. Otherwise you're going to have a, a chorus of her barking, but we'll see. She might go and lie down in the sun again. Is it sunny where everyone else is? I'm quite enjoying it. Even if it's cold, it's still quite nice. Right. Okay, so you can see now that looks more like um, a crumble mix. Um, so if you're thinking, goodness, I'm sure I must have not weighed out the flour properly because it's, uh, it's just not coming together. Still bear with it. Use the back of the spoon if you want and just really uh, push it together. You can, when you get to this stage, if you like, um, use your hands. Yeah, I'm just going to let my dog in before she uh, disturbs everyone outside. Bear with me. Come on, then. There we go. Sorry about that. Live, hey? She's so quiet, I hadn't realised that she was out there. They like sunbathing too much. Right. There we go. Oh, no, that's no better either, is it? Now they've all gone lively. Right. So I've got it to a point now that I'm going to scrape down my, my spoon like so there we go so you can still see it's crumbly but what i'm going to do is start using um my hands to i'm going to bring it down again i'm going to use my hands to push that together and it, and it does come it's quite nice texture because it's it's not too greasy um <laughs> And it should just push in. And it's, it's a nice mixture to do with um, the family as well. If you've got kids or grandkids, um, to make it with them, because I don't find it particularly messy 
you don't get your fingers covered. I love making bread, um, but my son hates um, wet um, bread dough, getting stuck on his fingers, can't stand it. So, right, we're getting there. So I'm just kneading this, just pushing it together and giving it a bit of a knead whilst it's in the bowl, just to get those last bits from the bottom of the bowl. There we go. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a knead whilst it's in front of me. I will show you what that looks like. I'll bring it up closer. And can you see it's quite a nice ball of dough? I've got relatively little dough on my hands. They, it doesn't come off. It's pretty solid, but it's it's not crumbling either. It's it's just the right texture. So a little bit of pressure and, and you get these kind of stress marks in it showing that it's not overly wet, but it's not dry enough to crumble either. And that's a perfect texture. Now we're going to roll this. You don't need to put flour down, but if you find that um, it does stick to your rolling pin or the worktop, uh, feel free just to put a little bit not huge amounts um, onto the side. In fact, I will do it just to show you the tiny amount. You see, I've just got it on the, my fingers and I'm just going to put it in front of me. But it's, it's barely, there we go. It's barely covering much at all. Just won't let it stick. Looks really good. I'm sure I've gone wrong before because I thought there was too much flour in it. Yeah, it's quite deceptive, isn't it, Isabel? It does look like um, you need to put something else in it, um, but, but keep going. So yeah, just a little bit, I think a wooden, a wooden rolling pin may not pick it up as much as this, this one does, but I'm just going to roll this out. Now, um, depth wise, I would go for about a centimeter in depth. Um, if you want something slightly deeper, um, by all means. And then as a cutter, I've got, um, it's a five centimeter round cutter. You can do fluted. Um, if you don't have cutters, um, a champagne flute would be about the same size as my cutter. Um, or as I said, you can do bigger or you can do a tray of it. If, you're, if you want to put your shortbread in a tray um, and do one big square or round of it, then I would suggest at this point you put it in and you press it into a pre-greased um, tray um, and, and push it in. Uh, Bridget, what temperature for the oven? So you're going to chill them first. So you've got 15 minutes between having them all cut out um, and the oven being on. So you have got time for a cup of tea before you actually bake them, but um, if you want to know now, um, the oven temperature is um, 150 degrees for fan, um, 170 for uh, regular, and gas mark, I think it's like a three and a half. I'm not quite sure it works out as a gas mark four. Uh, maybe go with how your oven cooks. If it tends to cook harshly, go down to a three. Um, right. So I'm just, I worked out, it's about, I mean, I've got quite long fingers um, and bony hands, but it's about um, uh, the depth of my fingers, the dough that I want without getting a ruler out. So I'm going to go for about that. And then I'm going to cut out these little, and you can see they're just, they're, they're not huge. Like on the palm of my hand, you know, still quite a lot of space. And they're all about that. And I, I just think they're a lovely size. Um, and you don't feel too guilty having a few of them. Well, that's my excuse anyway. So I'm just going to cut out these rounds and then um, we'll place them on a tray. Um, but I'm going to have to roll this up and do some more. So um, let's get these cut out. There we go. As I said, I've made some earlier so I can show you uh, how I ice them. So I've got another bit, but you don't have to do that yet. You can put yours in the fridge for a bit um, and 
and, and watch. And if you if you were happening to pop out to the shop or something, um, then you can just cover these and chill them until you're ready to bake them and they'll be fine left for a bit longer. Right, go for another roll out. And all I'm doing with the edges is um, stopping it from kind of um, coming apart too much. It's just kind of pushing those edges together just so I can get a few more rounds out really um, without having to keep rolling it up. I don't want to play with it too much and I don't want to soften that butter too much. So just being a little bit careful. I'll tell you how many I've made in a minute. There we go. Getting there. How many so far? Five, 10, 15, 17 so far. So now I've got only a little bit left. So rather than rolling it out, I'm just going to press it down uh, using the palm of my hand and just cut those, those last, so 17, 18, bear with me. I mean, if you wanted to, you could just get some um, balls of this, couldn't you? And just squish them down with your hand. They don't have to be these neat little um, circles. So if you don't have a, a, cook, a cutter, that's another way of doing it. But I do think they look quite nice like that. One last one. There we go. Squish that one down a bit. And then just a tiny little bit. I think if I put that in with the rest, it's probably going to um, burn. So I might have to just leave that one. Um, right. So next job. I'll try and swap these with my rolling pin. So I've got um, a baking tray and I've just got some parchment paper because I don't trust anything not even non-stick. Um, so what you'll want to do is place these on. Now, they, they don't spread out that much, um, but spread them out with like, I would put a two finger distance between them. However, you might find you have too many for one tray. But what I do is I'll put them on, all of them onto the one tray just to chill them down. And then I tend to transfer half of them onto another tray to, to bake. But quite frequently, I won't have more than uh, a shelf worth of space in my fridge. So just pop all the the um, the cookies on for now, the shortbread on for now. There we go. I'm just going to make some space for the extra ones. Um, and then spread them out. And I'll probably do two trays. Um, and, yeah, give them a two-fingered distance between them all there we go so once you've got all your shortbread like this pop them in the uh, fridge for like 15 minutes just to chill them and what happens is it hardens the the butter and then it stops them from spreading because if you've got really soft butter and then you put them into um, an oven and they spread if you've ever tried to make any biscuits that are um, you know they have a butter base and maybe you've done it before that you've done really cute shapes of like little gingerbread men or or bunnies or something and you put them in and quite frequently by the time you take them out they don't hold that shape and it's quite frustrating put your biscuits in the uh, fridge um, and set them so that when they go in um, they cook but they don't alter their shape um, so those uh, for you guys, we'll need to go into, well, me too, but I'll do mine in a minute. They need to go into the fridge for about 15 uh, minutes. Um, so you can you can come back to yours um, and put the oven on in a few. Um, now, I've made some. I have got a confession. Um, I accidentally forgot I was making biscuits when I did these here, some I made earlier, and I put them on at the same temperature I bake my cupcakes. So they, they're fine, but they're actually slightly more golden than they need to be. Um, so here's my here's some I made earlier. Now, these should have gone on at 150 and they went on at 165. Um, and actually, if I'd used my nose, I would have told I would have been able to tell you that they were done five minutes before I actually took them out. I have done a taste test and they're fine, um, but they don't need to look as golden as this. Actually, um, they're quite shortbread, quite light. Um, 
so you don't need to actually i'm going to put mine in the fridge now because we might be able to bake them bear with me there we go put mine in um but yeah you can see they haven't really changed shape they're still they're still about the same size maybe a tiny bit bigger but not much Oops. but th that they're a little bit more golden than they need to be the wrong way that way you can actually usually with my shortbread they're still quite light and there's just almost like a little golden ring around the very edges um but but no more um but if you do make that error don't worry because they're fine so with the uh shortbread so this is when they're cooked now so you yours are in the fridge mine are in the fridge this is the here's some i made earlier which i've cooked um and they will be cooking and i will repeat this they cook for about 25 minutes um at which point you take them out put them on the side and you leave them to cool um biscuits another trip tip for you if you've not made biscuits before when you take them out if you move them straight away you might find they go soft and they, they flop um and then you think oh they're not done so you put them back in the oven biscuits are soft when they come out you need to leave them to cool and harden up um so just give them um a good five minutes before you actually try to move any biscuit wh whatever biscuit you make um if you leave them and they aren't right and you were you know they needed some time you can still put them back in the oven it'll be fine but um on the whole biscuits need to harden uh, and left to cool to harden right icing sugar i have got 160 grams of icing sugar here excuse me whilst i just take some of this flour away there we go 160 grams of uh icing sugar and what I'm going to add to that is the lemon juice. So I'm just going to cut this. Um, now, if I can see the pips, I'm going to take the pips out. Otherwise, I'll end up fishing them out. Right, there we go. So I'm going to squeeze in the juice. Oh, there's a pip already and another one. I should get a juicer, really, shouldn't I? Don't want to be biting down on that. I'm just going to squeeze out one half and I'm going to do it half at a time just to make sure I don't over uh, uh, there we go right so I'm going to mix this up I think I'll need the other half but we'll just make sure you want um quite a nice um thick icing so it doesn't run everywhere it won't matter if it does it's just for presentation if you want it to look a bit prettier you want it a bit thicker so this is a little bit too too little amount of liquid so we'll use the other half let's take out the tips that i can see you can if you don't have fresh lemon um uh you, you could add a little bit of lemon uh extract i suppose to the dough um and you could add lemon juice you know like you use for your pancake day uh you could add that to um the icing sugar All right gosh this has got so many pips in this one um hang on i need another spoon to get gather them out did have a lovely ceramic uh, juicer, uh, but can I find it? No. There we go. So I'll just... Now, if this isn't enough, you've got a choice. You can go into another lemon or add a little bit of water. I think I would... I, I think probably just a little bit of water. Otherwise, you'll waste your lemon because this is almost almost done i'll show you with the lemon it's it's really quite thick it's a, a bit too thick to use but i'm going to just give it a little bit more of a stir yeah just a tiny bit probably just um like a teaspoon of water at a time um because i often find you can easily go the other way 
give that a bit of a stir up. It smells lovely. Let's get rid of any lumps. It's it's pretty good. If I was piping it, I would use it. If I'm using a spoon, yeah, you know what? I think that's about right. So if I show you, it's still quite thick. It's coming off the spoon, but it's not it's not pouring, pouring off the spoon. So that's kind of the consistency I would go for. Yeah. And all I'm going to do is take my spoon. Now you can drizzle this on, um, but I'm going to just pop about half a teaspoon on and then use the back of my spoon just to, I'll show you, show you the camera. Use the back of my spoon just to spread it out a bit like so. And I'm just using the back of the spoon because I find that easier. You've got more surface area. There we go. Like so. Ta-da! You can give it a little bit of a wiggle um, and you'll find that anything left mark-wise, um, uh, like a trail, uh, will disappear. Um, if it slightly goes over the edges, don't worry. It's just more icing to enjoy. So you can do this uh, with all these. These are cooled down ones. These have been out um, for well, a good hour. They don't take that long to cool down, to be honest. Um, but, um, but I am adding the icing to cool down biscuits. So if you find that you've got too much on your biscuit, you can, you, you can scrape it off a little bit using the back of your spoon, like so. I don't want too much. I just want a little bit more lemon zesty flavor in it. So again, I'm going to give it, you can see it's like a little trail. I don't know if you can see that there. So just give it a little bit of a shake and it will, it will go away. Um, so that's what I would do. And then once you've got them all um, iced, um, just leave them to set. Um, again, another hour and they should all be set. Um, of course, if you want to eat them sooner than that, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. It will just be slightly um wet icing still um if you want to put sprinkles on um you can uh if you want you know if you want to go a bit overboard with the decorating go for it they are absolutely yours to do as you wish as i said don't be afraid of trying different flavor combinations um you might like to try um a spice and a nut um in a shortbread um or if you if you do decide to use a tray, so you use like a cake tin to press it in to make one big shortbread, um, when you do that, um, same thing goes about chilling it. Although it can't spread because it's in the tin, um, what I would do is press it in, do any pattern you want. So if you want to use the back of a fork and go around the outside, um, do that. If you want to put the holes in, do that. But score it as to where you want it to break. So if you've got triangles or you're doing fingers, score it with a knife um, so that they are the points that it's going to break. Um, and then chill it, and then hopefully it will keep those markings so that when you share it out, they, you've got nice clean breaks. Um, as I said, 15 minutes is how long you want to chill them for. And then I'll give you the temperatures again. You want to pop them in the oven um, for uh at a hundred sorry 150 degrees for fan um or 170 uh for conventional um or gas mark it's like three and a half um is, is a is the match so depending on your oven if it cooks quite um uh, at a high temperature then go for a three if it cooks at a lower temperature go for a four um so, yeah, and then bake them for about 25 minutes. Um, and when they come out, they don't need to be quite as golden as this. Just a little bit changing colour, but they can still be quite light. You'll smell them, to be honest. Um, you can easily smell them cooking. They will smell ready. Um, and then you pop them on the side. If you are doing a larger tray um, and you've put all your mixture into one large tray, you're going to need longer than that. You might find you need 40 45 minutes um, but judge judge it depending on the size that you've used 
um, the smell will again give it away quite nicely. But for this size cookies, one of the reasons I like making them this size is because we've reduced the time it takes um, to bake them. So just 25 minutes will suffice. Um, and then once they're baked, um, transfer them to a rack if you have one um, and, and leave, let them cool slightly um, and, and then transfer them to a rack. Um, and then you can ice them when they're a little bit cooler. Um, and then store them for up to a month in an airtight container. Um, and as I said, apparently, although we've never really tried it that much uh, because the kids get hold of these and eat them too fast, um, but apparently they get better um, when they've left a li little longer. Um, so I'm gonna keep icing these, um, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. If you've got any um, unanswered baking questions, uh, shortbread or not, that you'd like to know, um, do ask me whilst I'm here. Um, and then I'm going to be back uh, next month and we're doing a, a Mexican shepherd's pie. Um, uh, which is really tasty and, and just a little bit different. My my family love different flavours, so um, so I thought I would share one with you, uh, which is a nice kind of wholesome dish um, and not too difficult to prepare. Um, so yeah, uh, and then and then I'm back in April um, for some hot cross buns with you to get all nice into Easter. Um, but uh, Virtual Village Hall will be sharing all of those. Uh, for you. Um, right, well this is, uh, that's got quite a lot of icing on, but maybe I will have, uh, maybe I'll have that one. Um, so if I show you, just to give you a bit of a close up, that's what they're looking like. They're really pretty. You can do your own patterns, you can do zigzags of icing on them, uh, you know, what, however you like, um, but they are delicious afternoon treats. Um, so any questions or are you all good? Hopefully you've enjoyed making or watching um, and do show your photos in the comments um, of your finished uh, shortbread biscuits. We'd love to see them. Um, so I'm not getting any questions that I can see. So I'm going to take it that you are all good. Hopefully you're all having a cup of tea, uh, maybe putting a bit on the, uh, uh, the dishwasher in advance and being all organised. Bake them up and enjoy them, guys. Thank you very much. Bye.